Hey guys, Foxytron Prime here, and welcome to the first of a brand new series I like to call My Transformers Collections. In this series, I will be showcasing each of my Transformers Collections I have gathered over the years. Let's not waste time and get right into it. Wheeljack here will give you a brief history on what we'll be showcasing today. Wheeljack, if you will. No problem. Well, before the Red series, we had Robot Replicas, a series of non-transforming action figures based on the live action appearances of the Michael Bay films. These figures were highly detailed and spanned through the first two movies. Here's a height comparison. As you can see, they stand around today's deluxe class scale, or smaller. The packaging, however, is a different story. Here is a box from the Revenge of the Fallen line. Very nice box art as well as character product shot. And get this, this is the height of what deluxe scale boxes used to be. I mean, here it is with a leader class box from today. Talk about trimming the cardboard, am I right? Anyway, over to you, Foxatron. Thanks, Wheeljack. Right, let's get started with the first six replicas from the first Transformers movie. Now bear in mind some of these figures have been customized, so don't mistake them for the actual product. Here we have First Lieutenant Jazz, one of my personal favorites simply because he looks awesome. I love the detail and plastic they use for these figures, they are much more consistent than the Red Series figures I will say. Also the first movie line did come with accessories, like each one of them comes with a single weapon for either their left or right hand, so uh, yeah, here we are, here he is with the giant hand cannon, and I have to say, he looks really awesome. Oh sorry, that's translation for, here we have Frenzy! This is without a doubt the most accurate frenzy you'll ever find. He also has a little button you can press that launches one of his little shurikens. It's really small but really nicely detailed. They just slot right back into his chest as if it was like a weak cassette for Soundwave. It's actually really cool. And here he is with his gun. It's really, really nice looking. Looks exactly the way it did in the movie. The, honestly, this figure is really, really nice. I like it a lot. Here we have our guardian, Bumblebee. And once again, he's a big guy. He's a giant figure. Sound familiar? Even in the Bayfast, they have a giant Bumblebee. A really well detailed figure, even if it does have some inaccuracies, but still nice. It still looks pretty nice, even with the gun on. I really like all that. Are you using English for 217? Here is the shortest of the bunch, Barricade. I really like the print they used for the police logo and the Decepticon symbol on this guy, though he doesn't have the punishing and slave writing, which is a shame. I don't know why, but his face looks like a bird to me. I don't know what it is, but it's still a nice figure though. His spinning mace of death looks awesome. I even like the wheel in the middle. That is great attention to detail. There he is, the big bot himself, Optimus Prime. I love this figure. He was the first movie Optimus Prime I ever got. I remember when I was a kid and I saw him on top of a shelf in Woolworths, back for when it was still a thing, and I absolutely loved it. Amazing figure if you ask me, even if it doesn't transform. I mean, look at all the paintwork. I mean, this figure is just absolutely amazing. Here he is with his Ion Blaster, looking pretty sweet. And I honestly, I just really love the look of this guy. The detail is really nice. Even though there are some inaccuracies, such as the shoulders, but still looks good. <laughs> yes, Lord Megatron, leader of the Decepticons. Now bear in mind, Foxatron completely overhauled the paintwork on this guy. And if you ask me, it was worth it, because he looks far more accurate than the paint job he used to have which was like a bluish color and I didn't even like it. Anyway, back to the review. As you can see, I look absolutely awesome, especially when I have my massive fusion cannon on. Join them in extinction! <laughs> Now, this guy is not part of the actual line, but I thought I should give him a mention anyway. This is my custom sound wave in the form of jazz. I have a review of him on my Toys and Reviews playlist if you'd like to check it out, because this is one of the best customs I ever made. It's inspired by G1, obviously, and I really... It, it amazes me how well he fits in Jazz's body. I mean, look at this. He looks great. Well, that does it for the first movie, Replicas. Onward to the Revenge of the Fallen Ones. Now, this is where they hit the peak in terms of accuracy, quality, and especially quantity. For instead of six, we have ten. So let's roll. The first figure we have here is our weapon specialist, Ironhide my first ever Ironhide movie figure, and yes, I did have a thing for non-transforming figures, don't at me, just because he looks simply amazing, and the detail is insane. I got this with Starscream and Ratchet in Toys R Us when they began releasing Revenge of the Fallen toys, and I got them all, and I just loved them. They were just amazing figures. Speaking of, here is Starscream, the most accurate looking Starscream we got before Leader Class Starscream was released. He just looks amazing. Like I said, they really hit a peak with Revenge of the Fallen. It's such a shame that they didn't continue on to with Dark of the Moon. 
I mean, I would have loved to have seen Sentinel Prime, Shockwave, especially uh, Megatron as well. I also did a custom version of Starscream as well to make him look like uh, the way he did in the first movie with all the tattoos removed. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Anyway, moving on to our medical officer, Ratchet. This guy is so well detailed, it's crazy for a figure from 2009. The paint apps and articulation, definitely one of the best and also the rarest figures in the line. I should add, you can find these guys on eBay for a really good cheap price. And if you're into really well detailed transforming figures that don't transform, I highly recommend them. <laughs> yes, the Lord of Destruction returns. I love how beefy I look. But one problem is the face sculpt is not great. I look like I smashed my face first into a door. But this figure still looks awesome, I don't even care. I mean, look at that fusion cannon and sword. I look like I could do some real damage. The leader of the Autobots is back and looks even better than the last one. At least in some areas, the face is not as detailed, but the far more accurate robot mode and the paint details totally make up for it. I mean, he looks so good. He looks far more accurate to the way he appeared in Revenge of the Fallen, and especially with that sword. He looks so cool with that sword. I love it. You guessed it, we have another Bumblebee again, and I actually like this one a little bit more than the other one, simply because it's more accurate, plus the black and yellow really pops with this figure, and the size of his cannon on his arm, he just looks really good with it. I should point out, the Revenge of the Fallen line of these figures didn't come with accessories, the weapons are permanently attached to their bodies, which is actually a shame. Well, except for one. Behold, the eternal glory of... Jetfire! This figure is amazing, despite the inaccurate blue paint job in some parts, but the detail speaks for itself. His cane is actually removable, which is great. I remember when I got him in Toys R Us, I didn't even know they were going to do a Jetfire figure for this line. But suddenly, there he was, and I had to have him. I just love him. I mean, the detail is amazing. The head sculpt's pretty nice. The scraped up Decepticon symbol. Like, this is definitely one of the best figures in the line. And yet, here's another figure that I never expected to come out in this line. Skids! The last figure to ever come out from the Robot Replicas line, and I have to say, it's really, really cool. I mean, it's a shame they never got round to doing Mudflap, I'd love to have seen that, because the paint and the detail on this figure look incredible. I, I mean, he just looks like he bounced off the screen. This is a really good figure. Ah yes, the Fallen. I really never expected this guy to happen. When I was a kid, I remember when I saw him in the Toys R Us website, and then I went there the next day and I managed to get him. Granted, this is before I knew anything about internet shopping, so uh, <laughs> I was only 11 at the time, so it doesn't really matter. But still, this figure looks really, really cool. I love the paint and the look of him, he just looks great. Ah yes, Sideswipe. Damn, he's good. I mean, seriously, look at this guy. He's got little platforms on his feet so he can stand, and the articulation is so good. The swords look good. He's a really, really nice figure. I would definitely recommend him. Well, that does it for the Robot Replicas line, so now, as a bonus, I'm going to include the Dark of the Moon Revel Tech figures. Just because I think they deserve a spot in this video, these guys are not mainline figures, by the way. These are much more pricey, and you can see why. I mean, look at Bumblebee. This is one of the best looking Bumblebees I have, if not the best. He's got loads of accessories, paint, detail. He's like a shrunken DLX 3.0 figure. I mean, he looks amazing, especially with the battle mask and the head sculpt. He's, he looks incredible, and it's a really, really nice figure. I would definitely recommend it. And speaking of recommending, I would totally recommend Optimus Prime from Dark of the Moon. Look at the paint. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, there are two versions of this figure, one with guns for the jetpack and one with the jetpack with melee weapons. Now, obviously, I went for the one with the jetpack because you can't go wrong with that. I mean, look at this. He's even got a head with the mouthpiece. I actually like that. And my goodness, look at the wingspan on him. He is massive. It is so wide. Like, I can barely fit it on the screen. And like, this is really, really big for a figure that small. I was really impressed with this figure and I love the axe and the sword. It looks really nice. I would totally recommend the Rebel Tech figures. They're really, they're a really nice display piece. Well guys, that's it for my showcase review of my Robot Replicas collection. I've had a really fun time looking back on this collection and I hope you guys have enjoyed me reviewing them. We've reviewed a grand total of 20 figures, 16 Robot Replicas, two Rebel Tech figures and two customs. And that's that. That's the whole collection. And that is it guys. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Next time I will be showcasing my Transformers Prime collection as voted by you, so stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe, and ROLL OUT!